Well, that sucked. I don't know why. Yeah, it just disconnected for some reason, but my internet connection stayed on. I don't know. I'm sure streaming is really, really clogged right now. There's a lot of people doing live streams, and I'm using Restream to delegate my single stream to four different places, so I'm not surprised if occasionally something falls apart. Anyways, as I was saying, um, I like to use hardware sequencers to sequence stuff because they're just one step fewer than using a computer. I know a lot of people say to I should just set up templates with all my MIDI stuff, but I'm very modular with the way that I hook up all my MIDI gear at any given time. I'm always sort of trying new different ways to do things. And so um, with MIDI hardware sequencers, I have a few of them and they all operate in slightly different ways. Um, one of them is actually kind of my favorite. It's a really sort of roundabout way of getting to work it. So it's a two track sequencer uh, in that you record on track one and then dump that to track two and then record on track one. And you can keep doing this 16 times. So it is technically a 16 track uh, MIDI sequencer in that it will play back on all 16 channels but you don't have any individual control of the of the tracks once you've dumped them all to track two. It's really sort of a weird way, but very quick. It's very fast, and um, and that's and the timing on it is is beautiful. And it has a couple of MIDI outs, so you can set like MIDI out two to just send sync signal to a drum machine, and then you can use a master sequence uh, master keyboard that allows you to change MIDI channels to control all your hardware which is what I did, uh, and it was very quick and easy to hook up. So this song, Machines, uh, I'll show you actually what's sort of left of the original parts. So the QS7 organ, the June, Alpha Juno ARP, the, I think the accent synth, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I think those are all originally things that were left over from the original sequence, like the original uh, MIDI sequence that I made. Yeah. So the Alpha Juno, the Accent Synth is the system one. And I um, kept those parts. The synth bass is the micro groove, but I redid it because I, I actually, the original version of it was slower um, by a few BPM. So I actually just grabbed some of the files from that original version, brought them over and time stretched them to the point where they still sounded fine, but the bass didn't. So I re-recorded the bass and the drums and everything. The drums are from the TR-8 drum machine. Uh, the toms are samples of probably a Simmons, yeah. Well, those toms anyways, and then there's, yeah, all the toms are, I'm pretty sure, are Simmons. Or they might be... Yeah, yeah, they're all Simmons toms. <laughs> Simmons toms are more 80s to me. I, I, they just scream 80s, so... This is actually playing the wrong sample. That's very interesting. Oh, I know why. Because it unmuted some shit that's supposed to be muted. Let's just get rid of that. We must be ready for a new danger. The atomic bomb. You'll know when it comes. Machines are dancing. Right, and the, actually, those vocal takes right there, I believe, are from the original version. It was the only part of the song that I had written vocals for was just these two bits of me saying machines are dancing 
and then some ambiguous bullshit that just went along with the the whole fucking thing. And uh, I really struggled to write verses for this song. I really wanted it to be a song that had like f a full vocal setup and everything, but it didn't. <laughs> it just never, <clears throat> but it never materialized. I, I, I felt every time I I did um, uh, tried to drop vocals for it, it uh, it just sounded like I was trying to shoehorn it into a song that it didn't fit in. Um, there is a version out there that has vocals to it. Well, not out there. It's here. It's in here. In my computer. There's a version of it that has vocals, like just some guide vocals, but they're really goofy, and it just does not work well. And I was going to give it to somebody else, too, and be like, here, fucking somebody add some vocals to this. This is driving me nuts. And it just didn't it never materialized. So here we are. We're about a week before the deadline for all of the tracks on All Night Starlight Electronic Cafe. And I need one more song. And I wanted this song to be on it, but I wanted it to have vocals because I wanted all of the songs to have vocals. But then I remembered that almost every one of my albums has like an instrumental sort of interlude song in the middle uh the first album doesn't really have one but night maze does it has the uh, legend of the anti-god and then in the dark has um the uh the unholy which is sort of the you know intermission the interlude in the middle ish of the album but this um this one didn't fit as an interlude i i, I slowly was turning this into sort of one of those 80s dance-ish tunes that just had a bunch of samples in it that was sort of thematic of the time. Um, you know, a la, like, um, fucking pump up the volume and all that kind of stuff. You know, those sort of things. And also, I was working really heavily on my side project, Razorback Hollow, at the time, which was ver very much <laughs> influencing everything else I was doing in terms of sampling the hell out of everything. So, um... Yeah, let's give this song a, a listen through. I am an android. <laughs> this is most disturbing. I am a robot. And that's not even the worst thing. I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> we must be ready for a new danger. The atomic bomb. You'll know when it comes. Machines are dancing Machines are dancing Machines are dancing You lie awake at night Listen to sounds of betrayal Knock you down hard, or throw you against a tree or a wall. How can we tell when the atomic bomb may explode? Machines are dancing. Machines are dancing. Machines are dancing. You lie away. Sometimes. 
It's just too cool. <laughs> so I'll do a quick uh, instrument breakdown of everything. So some things are labeled appropriately. So there's two bits in this that are done using the Alesis QS7, which is the 76 key synthesizer that I have, which I got from my friend Larry. Uh, Larry is like a local synth guru wizard that I've been friends with for, fuck, it's been a decade at least now. Uh, he played keyboards in a production of the Rocky Horror Show that I was the musical director and band leader of. Um, I did it like five years, five or six years in a row or something. For the last three years, he was in the band. Really awesome dude. And um, he was just a sort of, he's always in statement states of flux with his gear, you know, like a true gearhead. And... Um, he had this 76 key keyboard, which by all, in all intents and purposes is, is what's called a rompler. So it's all samples, you know, um, all sample based and playback. But there is full editing of everything. And at first it was kind of like, uh, I don't know, I didn't, re I wasn't really a big fan of that kind of thing. But I kept playing it whenever I was over at his house and it just sounded so fucking good and I wanted a 76 key keyboard because I'd like to have full low end range with a lot of stuff especially for pads and so on and so forth and to use as a controller um well slowly but surely I taught myself how to edit the thing and you have like four sound sources it has like a hundreds of fucking waveform samples in it and it's filters are digital but you know like they're pretty good it came out in, I don't know, 1998, I think, or something, 96, maybe. Uh, no knobs or anything on the front of it. Um, but then I started downloading, like, I actually got PCMCIA memory cards for it and started downloading these huge libraries of other sounds and putting them in the thing. And this just, it sounds so gorgeous. You know, huge pads and fucking just, just gorgeous stuff. So... I've used it on a lot of things. I want to get it out of storage and use it again because it's just such an awesome piece of machinery. Um, but, so, there's a couple of sounds on this. The, the QS7 organ, it's not really, like, that amazing. You know, it's pretty simple. But there's this sound at the end called Sparkle Siren, which is actually not what it's called. It's called something else. But this sound is, like, too cool. Like, fuck yeah, man. Ah, uh, it's so awesome. It's such a good sound. Um, so there's that, and then there's my trusty old uh, Alpha Juno one, which is used for so much and so many songs. 
This is just this sequence that I just repeated over and over again, and then there's like another different part. It's just such a good trusty and digitally controlled analog synth. And then the synth bass is the microbrute, I believe. Yep. Sounds like it. Pretty identifiable right out of the gate. Of course, the system one is the accent synth is the system one. And the drums, like with most stuff at that time, the kick, snare, and hi hats are the uh, TR8 drum machine. The thing just sounds fucking perfect every time I've used it ever for anything. I mean, I'm using it right now for the live setup. Um, all my drums are outsourced to that because most of the songs are that, anyways. It just sounds so good, you know? It's got this weird thing with the hi-hats where if you put it into what's called TR mode, um, it actually has a slightly wonky sync to MIDI clock so that sometimes you get slightly like flammed or overlapping notes and it just gives it a little bit of a more, sort of a an oddly organic feel to it. So I use that a lot too. Uh, drums. The toms are Simmons toms as I discussed before. And then clap is, I don't know what the clap is, I think it's just a static noise, and then there's this little sort of thing here, I can't remember what it's from, what does it say on it, no it doesn't say what's on it, it's just this little reverse string thing, I think it might be system one strings, I know the lead is the system one, Just so smooth. Yeah. And then all the samples, well shit, they're just a mishmash of a billion different things. There's samples from cartoons. Um there's samples from There's like the laser blast from uh, I am an android. You know, all those sort of million that I'll go I'll find the sound. The laser blast from a million different fucking cartoons. Yeah, it's actually from Star Trek initially, uh, but they've stolen it and used it in cartoons as a laser blaster sound. So I uh, I stole it from I think like a Brave Star cartoon episode or something, and and just put everything together. And of course, almost almost all of the dialogue is from Civil Defense. Uh, you know, like how to how to deal with fallout and stuff. And then there's this one bit in the middle here, which is actually from a sort of apropos movie to watch at a time like this. It's uh, uh, one of the various iterations of the story I Am Legend. This, it's from the Omega Man, starring Charlton Heston. And this is um, Tobias, tell he who is a television personality, and then he became sort of a leader of this like cult of mutants or whatever. Um. And um, he says this really, is this really pertinent thing. Is this the end of technological man? Is this the conclusion of all our yesterdays? The age of the wheel. We were warned of judgment. Well, here it is. Here. Now. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty ominous sounding when you consider everything that's going on right now. And that that movie specifically is about a fucking disease that doesn't really kill the vast majority of people on the planet, uh, but turns them into sort of like subhumans. It's uh, scary, <laughs> to say the least. You know. And then there's this big awesome bit at the end here, which is... 
I, 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 I am a robot. That's uh, Robbie the robot. I, I am, I, I, I am, I am a robot. I, I, I am, I, 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 I am, I am a robot. I, I am, I, I, I am, I am a robot. I, 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 I am, I, I, I am, I, I, I am, I, 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 I am. I love stuttering samples a lot. It's too cool. And all the little sort of static blasts and stuff, I think there's... Those are just Tom hits. Tom hits and these things, like... I'm on to something here. It might be a 12-inch remix of the song that I'm going to start working on right away. But anyways, that's your track breakdown for track number two off of the All Night Starlight Electronic Cafe. The song is called Machines. And uh, it's apparently quite a favorite of a lot of people. Chris Hewitt from Dickens in Calgary really, really loves this song. And he keeps bugging me to play it live. And I'm kind of like, well, there really isn't a lot of stuff to play live, but I guess we'll figure something out. But anyways, so thank you so much. Thank you for turning into the live stream. Thank you for tuning into this. Tomorrow night we're going to do track number three, which is uh, Beyond the Twilight. <laughs> I almost forgot what song it was. I have the memory of a swimmy water thing. Yeah, anyways. You're welcome, and thank you for tuning in to all the streams that I've been doing. There'll be plenty more. I'm just going to keep going because uh, we all we all need some form of interaction with people. So and I promise that every time, every time my hair will be even more fucked up. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, everybody. Until next time, same bat time, same bat channel.